What's going on guys? You're watching The Hungry Handgunner. Now I'm really excited about today. Even in spite of being a little bit nervous about being able to get ammo, I was able to finish my review on the FN 509 Tactical. So I got my thousand rounds through it. I have been carrying the gun for a couple weeks now. And as far as I know, I'm one of the only reviewers that like carries a gun as part of the review process. But uh, it's been a lot of fun. So I'm actually carrying it right now. This has been a lot of fun. I have it here in a, I'll show you guys a close up of this anyway. But this is a Lucky Coyote inside the waistband with soft loop snaps. And it is cut for the Hollow Sun 507C and has the Olight uh, PL Pro Valkyrie on it. So, gun should be clear. Yep, it is clear. I think what we need to do now is dive down close and I'll tell you about it and what comes with the gun. So what I'll go ahead and do is just show you guys that it's clear, uh, no mag, no round in the chamber. And I'm going to go ahead and take this light off. Love this light. Anyway, what we're left with here is the FN 509 Tactical. They do have a black version. This is the FDE. Uh, automatically you get 50% more accuracy out of the box. I'm just kidding. That's a joke. I just like brown guns. That's me. It's going to be a striker fire design. It uses a 17 round flush fitting magazine, which is here. I'll show you guys what that looks like. I can do it. 17 round magazine flush fitting. Comes with one of those, and then two of these 24 round uh, extended magazines. And they do have an over insertion protector there, which is neat. Keeps It's got a little lip right there. It keeps you from uh, potentially shoving the mag in too far up, things like that. Pretty neat design from FN. It is nice having these two 24 rounders. We'll talk more about the mags here in a second. Up top you have one of the industry's best uh, optic mounting systems that I have seen out of the box. Obviously if you are married to a certain type of optic you can go the route of getting it milled and that's going to work just fine. I have the Hollow Sun 507C on here. I've had good luck. I'm not sure how well the dot's picking up on there. But you do have suppressor height backup sights, which allow you to get a good co-witness through the optic window. Try to do it on camera. And then you can see some dust and stuff on here. That's because I've been carrying it, surprise, surprise, and actually really enjoying it while I do that. You have an ambidextrous uh, mag release, ambidextrous slide lock, slide release. Nice, beautiful real estate with rail up here, forward cocking serrations. They look super, super simple, right? but they work really well. Get good positive traction on the gun, uh, allows you to do all your press checks, things like that. There is no manual safety, which if you guys have been watching me for any length of time, you know I detest manual safeties on carry guns, especially striker fired carry guns. Trigger pull is listed from FN as being between five and a half to seven and a half pounds. Uh, I'm gonna say it's probably closer to six, six and a half on my gun, and it has smoothed up. It was very gritty at first, but it has smoothed up. I'll go ahead and let you guys see what that looks like. There's the brake. Reset. Positive and tactile. A little bit of a long reset, but you do have some take up there. Uh, gets progressively harder. It's almost like a stage of take up. This is one resistance, a little bit more resistance. Pretty crisp wall, pretty heavy brake, but it's definitely uh, it's definitely there and it's definitely doable 
Uh, I've got sub one eight times from draw to first shot, some a little bit below one and a half seconds from draw to first shot at 15 yards. So it's possible to shoot with this trigger. I may eventually go upgrade it, but I'm gonna keep shooting it and see if it smooths out anymore first. I've got this nice texture here, uh, the thumb pads. Thumb just kind of melts right in there. The frame is kind of scalloped just a little bit. The grip feels very good in the hand. Comes with two different back straps. We have a curved one that is on the gun. That's the one that came. Uses a roll pin to push that out and put a flat back strap in if you so desire. Thought about doing it, but honestly, this grip just fits my hand perfect. I can get to my controls uh, with a firing grip, and that's very nice. Up front, we do have a threaded barrel. And in keeping with some of the latest designs, guys don't freak out, we did clear the gun. But in keeping with some of the latest designs, there is a captive O-ring inside of this thread protector. And the thread protector is not walked off even once. To take the gun down, super simple. We're gonna bring the slide to the rear, lock it into place, pivot our slide takedown lever right here, just like that. Go ahead, bring it back, let it forward, pull the trigger, so make sure the chamber's unloaded, and then the slide will come right off the frame. I'll give you guys a look at the internals. You can see there's a lot of steel on these frame rails for the slide to ride on. Come over here, you have your recoil spring and guide rod assembly one of two that comes with the gun. So this one is the silver version from the factory. Uh, it's designed for your standard loadings. However, because this is a suppressor ready handgun, FN does something really cool. They throw in an extra guide rod. Now this is gonna be the reduced power one if you're shooting subsonic ammo with a suppressor, things like that. This yellow one will work there. A lot of people, myself included, have had no issues running the standard silver spring with it. So we've just left that in there. So we'll set that to the side to finish field stripping this. Just gonna take your barrel, slide it out of the frame just like that. As you can see, it is a little bit dirty. I, I do shoot this gun quite a bit. Um, make sure it stays lubricated as you can see. And then we go from there. So after a thousand rounds later, um, that's what you're looking like as far as wear here. And I don't shoot uh, light ammo. I shoot 124 grain NATO spec. It's the closest thing I found to replicate uh, my carry ammo. So that's what I use. You can see a little bit of wear on the barrel and barrel hood. Nothing nothing that concerns me. Uh, the gun is, performs well. To reassemble, just put your barrel back in just like I did. You're going to take your recoil, spring, and guide rod assembly. Put this end down into the hole in the frame. Go ahead and slide your other end right there. Line the slide up with the rails on the frame. Bring the slide all the way to the rear. Lock it into place pivot your takedown lever and there we go you can throw your thread protector back on there I will say uh, it is required to take apart or to take the thread protector off to disassemble the gun uh, the Beretta the thread protector is flush fitting so you can leave it on the M9A3 I should say if you guys have been watching me for a while you know I have a love affair going with that pistol but on this one you are going to need to take that off the sights are tritium uh, they are very nice sights I love them and let's see what else we've got going on here. Uh, the barrel length is going to be four and a half inches. The overall length is 7.9 inches. Twist rate is going to be one and 10 inch right hand twist. The height is 5.75 inches. Now, obviously, if you throw a red dot on there, you are increasing that height a little bit. And the sight radius is 5.79 inches. FN mentions, mentions this. Um, your 24 round magazine is roughly the same length as the slide. So why that's a big deal I don't understand unless they are talking about uh, with holsters you know if you're getting one of those sidecar designs or something like that um, maybe to let you know they're not as large as they seem but again very very close to the length of the slide so for what it's worth there's that the cool thing about this gun and I'll have to grab this little baggie here so bear with me is the options for mounting optics they have all sorts of plates and hardware to mount all sorts of things. It's actually a two-part combination, but as the gun comes from the factory, this piece is actually in place of the optic, and these little wings protect your rear sight, protect it from getting knocked out of drift. That is pretty cool. You have some serrations here on the front, so if you needed to use your sights, 
uh, for one-handed manipulation and things like that, the serration should help grab. And it actually looks pretty cool. I'll go ahead and roll in a picture of how that looks stock now. However, if you were like me, you most likely bought this gun to put a dot on, and at that, it excels. For those who don't know, this Hollow Sun 507C shares the same footprint as the Trijicon RMR. So, go ahead in the manual, and it will tell you what uh, pieces work for what, but you have a flat piece back here. I'm not sure how well you guys can see that, and then a piece here. Underneath this front piece, there is a rubber O-ring that helps keep tension on this. I've not had the first issue with threads backing out or anything. The optic still isn't loose. Uh, it's maintained zero this whole time. And that is one of the reasons I consider this to be uh, the superior factory optics mounting system. You have the flexibility to run RMRs, Vortex, Doctors, Seymours, and Holosun. And no thread locker required. That's right. I didn't use any thread locker when mounting this Holosun on here. So that is definitely something to look at there. Um, in terms of suppressor ready, I mean, you've got it all. You've got the threaded barrel, the suppressor height sights. You have the reduced power recoil spring to help you there. Uh, it's getting a little windy. I'm sorry if the noise picks up. So you are getting a feature loaded handgun here, and I think that's awesome. It does come with this zippered hard case, uh, or zippered soft case, not a hard case. And your mags go in like so. So you have room to pick up more uh, of these 24 rounders or the 17 rounders. Or if you live in a state that just hates you and hates freedom, uh, 10 rounders. So that is neat. Let's go ahead. It does have the obligatory uh, lock for your gun. Guys, get a safe. And then on the front of the bag, you have the nice FN logo. So this is really cool. Um, you get a little zippered pocket. It's nice. I actually use this bag a lot when I'm shooting my Beretta because I have an abundance of Beretta magazines. So stagger this up and then carry the bread out here and have a good time one more thing and this isn't really a review of the holster I'm gonna have a separate video on that but this is what I've been carrying it in this is the lucky coyote kydex that I had made for it so it's see it's molded for that Olight it does also work with the TLR 7a and the uh, Olight PL Mini 2 Valkyrie so that's nice I've got some flexibility there although I would most likely just carry it with this light uh, I'll show you guys how that works real quick these lights are super easy to mount they don't go anywhere you can adjust them if they are too loose and then you just slide the gun in there so you can see Lucky Coyote did a good job with the cut for the red dot and the light and all that so very comfortable love the soft loop the appendix claw and that's how I carry this gun is appendix all right, let's go back up top. Inevitably, when you talk, start talking about firearms, uh, price is a common subject that comes up. The MSRP on this gun is going to be $1,049. That's straight from FN's website. They do have a black version. I think the black version is the same price. Uh, if that's your thing, I don't know why it would be. Brown guns are awesome. In my opinion, I like everything. But for the price, I can tell you right now, I did not pay $1,049. And you guys know that I hate giving you prices because that stuff can change especially with everything going on with COVID-19 so I'm not sure what they're running right now I can tell you that I picked this up at a very large firearm store for $8.99 before tax and all that and included in that at the time they were running a promo for the TLR 7A which is a neat little 500 lumen single CR123A weapons mounted light I do like the light as I've said before this if you guys thought I was too poor to get a uh, stream light even I've got TLR1s, etc. I like the PL Pro for my weapons mounted light. It works the best for me. Uh, rechargeable, two different light output levels. I like it. So, back to the gun itself. This is just pretty awesome. Um, a lot of the components in here, the polymer frame does have replaceable steel frame and slide rails if those were an issue. You do have the interchangeable back straps, you've got the rail, you have a half by 28 thread on your barrel, I forgot to mention that during close-ups. Um, the external extractor is there, you can use that as a loaded chamber indicator of sorts. I don't normally do that, I'll give the gun a quick little press check and I can normally make sure that it's loaded before I leave the house. But oftentimes I'm not really playing with my carry firearms that much anyway. So while I carried this gun, it's not a small gun. Uh, Definitely not a small gun. So go ahead, throw it in here. 
Um, the weight, I didn't think to put it on a scale, but it's not terrible. It's 27.9 ounces unloaded, so figure you know, 18 rounds of 9mm if you're carrying one in the pipe, which I see no reason not to, especially with a gun with a trigger this heavy and a good secure holster. Uh, this is not a small carry package. That being said, I tend to lean towards carrying full-size guns anyway, so this has worked out well for me. Uh, one thing I will mention, I'm also a big advocate of carrying a spare magazine. This is where things get interesting. My mag carriers that I currently have would work fantastic for a magazine this size. It fits most double stack magazines. It's got a tensioner and this magazine works well. And these magazines fit in it well. The issue comes in with the height. Uh, this sticks up, you know, if I've got this much of the mag in here, this sticks up a good two inches taller than this mag. So, eventually, I'm going to grab another 17 round mag for this gun. I like having 24 extra rounds with me, and most of the time it's not a big deal carrying this. However, there are occasions where that two inches of extra protrusion carrying this mag can make or break you in terms of what you're wearing and things like that. Iron sight performance, uh, I'll be honest with you, as soon as I got the gun, I put the red dot on it and went to town. But I have shot the gun with the red dot off. So again, I don't like talking accuracy too much with guns like these because most of us, the guns are gonna be more accurate than we'll ever be. I'll bring it up if there's an issue. I had no issues with this. I had no issues using the iron sights through the optic lens. But a gun like this really, really lends itself to running it with a micro red dot on there. Um, I've been thoroughly impressed with my draw to first shot times, improving with the dot, my ability to take out smaller targets at distance, has gone up with the dot. So if you're on the fence about getting a red dot and you don't want to get a gun milled, you might want a dedicated firearm to throw that dot on, this might be a good option for you. You have lots of options as far as what red dots you want to put on there. If you want to experiment with Vortex or Hollow Sun or, and you're worried that you might have to step up to an RMR later on, this may be the way to go. You're not getting something permanently done to the gun. As far as ergonomics, the gun is very ergonomic for me. It fits in my hand just perfectly. Places, the little cutouts for your thumbs are great. I can reach the controls. Getting a good thumbs forward grip on the gun is not an issue at all. I just love shooting it. So I think, speaking of shooting it, I think what we're going to do next is we'll shoot it. I'm going to roll in a little bit of footage that's not necessarily from today. Uh, pulled my hamstrings out. <laughs> Pulled my hamstrings out. Messed up my hamstring somehow moving some lumber. So uh, not going to be doing a lot of running gun, things like that. We're going to be static shooting today and just kind of taking it easy. Just ringing some steel for fun. Uh, I do have video. The footage that I'm rolling in is going to be some draw to first shot drills uh, that I was using this gun for and some first person shooting stuff. So we'll get started on that. One point eight. One point eight. One point seven one. One point seven one, but a miss, no good. One point seven three. Two, five, five, <laughs> not so good. One point seven eight.
side locks open. I can feel it lock open too. That's cool. Uh, go ahead, put one of the 24 round happy sticks in there. Optics locked up tight. I like that. All right. that swinger to move in it can be a little bit of a challenge. Another good lock open. All right, we're at a distance of 15 yards from my target. It's a nine inch shoot and see target so it's not the five rounds, five seconds, five inch. It's going to be uh, five yards, five seconds, five rounds, <clears throat> and a nine inch target. So we're gonna put it on the shot timer here on my phone and see what we get. Three point nine six. Three point nine six. Show that to you guys. Those that care. And we'll take a look at the target. There we go. Not too shabby. Would have liked to have been a little closer together, but I'm not going to complain. All right, folks. Uh, got one of these 24 rounders in the gun. Nice hollow sun 507C. Still just using the dot. I don't really like the circle reticle. We are uh, 20 yards from the uh, silhouette up there, which means about 15 yards from the steel swinger. Figured I'd give you guys a first person view going through a few magazines of this guy. So, here we go. These, these mags, man. Anyway, yeah, here we go. Last round, I think. It was. Go ahead and go to the uh, 17 rounder. Nice slide stop slide release. I can actually get to it from right there. So, wind's picking up a bit. Sorry about that. Keep shooting left every time I go to the 17 round mag. So it'll take a little more practice. The last one in that mag. Go to this last 24. Let's see what we get here. Oh man, I gotta practice shooting striker fire guns again. I've gotten so used to double to single actions, it's throwing me off a little. Not too shabby. Yeah, I'm really liking this gun. Let's see if we can go from presentation. Very sweet shooting gun. All right, she's empty. 
I've got to give you a couple cons on the gun and I hate doing that because obviously all of us like to uh, think we bought the best thing ever. This trigger, especially in 2020, I know this gun was designed to be FN's foray into potentially winning the military modular handgun system trials. It did not get that bid, obviously. That went to Sig Sauer with the M17 and then the M18. However, it feels like, and I'm maybe speaking completely out of school, it feels like they went with a very heavy trigger on purpose, possibly for safety reasons. But in 2020, the parts are out there, the technology's out there to make that trigger uh, less gritty out of the box and a little bit lighter. I don't mind a five pound trigger and a striker fired gun, but when you get much further north of that, uh, you have to work at it a little bit more. The grittiness is still there to an extent, and the trigger has gotten a little bit more crisp after a thousand rounds of firing, but it's still there. And I feel like for a gun at this price, it should have a better trigger in it. I'm not gonna ding them too hard on that because this was designed to put up with people from the Air Force and the Navy and yeah, Marines when they're not eating crayons and things like that and Army guys, I don't even know. So it was designed to mitigate that, I believe, from a safety perspective. That's not too bad. The other con I'll say is just that if you're looking at this for carry that you'd have to pick up another one of these mags. The mags are not cheap for these. Uh, they're going to run you between $40 to $60 depending on which one you want. You want a tan base plate. Uh, the list goes on. So they're not cheap magazines. They are going to cost you a little bit to get another one of these or stock up on more of the 24 rounders. As far as function of the gun, I have no complaints. Uh, the gun has been reliable. The gun is ergonomic. It's a good looking handgun and I know looks are subjective, but if you guys have been watching the channel for a while, you know that I'm a fan of FDE, especially this two-tone where the, it's more of a burnt bronze on the slide. I love that. Can't really explain it, but there it is. The sights, I should have mentioned this earlier, the sights are gonna be Trigicon, so they are uh, high quality night sights. I've had no issue with the Tritium. There are three dot, and you've got a white ring around your front sight, so that should help you acquire that a little bit faster. Most of us are going to throw a dot on a gun like this. Uh, they do have FN 509s that are not the tactical variant, so if you don't care about a threaded barrel and uh, being optics ready, there is that. They also have smaller versions, midsize and compact versions of this gun that are out now. So if that's your speed, go for it. All in all, guys, this has uh, become, I mean, I was carrying it for the review anyway, and it has become my go-to. Uh, this is my bump in the night gun. This is my carry gun. It does all of these things well. And that's one advantage if you're trying to figure out why on earth you should carry a full-size handgun. If you're the type of person that for whatever reason, like me, has decided a handgun is what you would grab first in the event of an issue at home, then this lends itself well to that. You can train with one gun. Uh, you can have all the accoutrements on it that you would want in a home defense situation on your carry gun. Just learn to dress around it. It's very nice knowing that I've got uh, magazines like this on standby should I need them. And like I said, if you drill with the one gun, uh, it makes it a lot easier. So there's not many situations where I wouldn't be able to conceal this. And for what it's worth, I'll wear like a size large uh, if the gloves are sized bigger or if they're particularly sized tighter, then I wear an extra large to give you an idea of hand size. 6'1", 245 on a good day, 255 during quarantine. Uh, if that helps put that in perspective for you. So, I know this is a little bit more long-winded on the review. Uh, some folks had said they would like to see more detail in the review, so I hope this answered that. All in all, guys, if you're looking at one of these, I'd have to say go with it. There was originally a striker breakage issue in the first gens that came out, and then on the second generation of these guns, I've got a mosquito that's trying his best to bite me. Killed him on the 509. 509 now is a confirmed kill. Anyway... The second generation of these guns, it appears that they did remedy that uh, striker assembly breakage issue. There are Apex tactical aftermarket strikers you can put in the gun. Uh, to be on the safe side, any dry fire I've done with this, I've done with a snap cap in it, and that's probably a good idea all the way around to protect your firearm. But I've had no issues with the gun during the time I've had it. If that changes, you guys know I'll update you. So stay safe, keep shooting, and I'll see you next time.